I've said many times before on this channel, I don't believe in coincidence. It's one of those words. It's coincidence. And I think it is a coincidence. It does coincide. That the weekend after the movie about the culmination of the 60s riot phenomenon called Detroit, which focused on the Detroit Rebellion of 1967. That comes out weekend before last. And then last weekend, we have a race riot. What a coincidence. And everybody's so excited. Fat Joe drops so excited. See, yeah, heavyweight. These things happen, not always because the brotherhooders are making calls and coinciding things in different aspects of pop culture. Though that does happen. But sometimes we're seeing things happen because of what they believe as above so below and what we believe is will be done on earth as it is in heaven we see a reflection of what's going through the air remember the adversary is called the prince of the power of the air we see a reflection of the vibration going through the air or the energy in the air what's in the air I can feel it coming in the air tonight something in the air hold on because we're just seeing the beginnings of something that we've been talking about also for some time on here. The black and white chessboard dynamic coming to full fruition in the way that the brotherhood is and the powers that be mean for it to do. This was all orchestrated and planned. Three lives, we're told, again, you know, gonna be a slew of videos gonna say it's a hoax at the end of the day it doesn't matter if the majority of American people or people worldwide believe that that's what happened that will adjust their mindsets that will give them a particular frame of mind and thought and that's what the powers that be want they control your mind they'll control your behind Everything starts with the hearts and the minds of the people. We've talked about this also a number of times when W. Bush was going to war. And I was, you know, just really starting to get a good grasp of things. Certain things that they were saying on the news was standing out to me though. I still didn't understand the whole science of the sorcery that is the news. But I noticed they kept saying this, this, this phrase, this terminology. We have to capture the hearts and minds of the people. My spotty senses went to tingling back then. I didn't know what it really was. Jeremiah 33 and 3 talking to me. So here we are in 2017. The celebrity in chief sitting in the White House. He is not a shot caller. He would be the first president in history to call his own shots and make his own decisions, if that were so, but he's not. Again, he was placed in that office as a figurehead to represent what the climate or what the, what the air would carry for the next four years, or more or less. So they allow for this particular figurehead, as opposed to the other one they could have had, either one would have been controlled. Because this figurehead, being in office, gives them the ability to pull off the most ludicrous false flags and staged events. Why do they want to do that? Because they want to do the hell Mary now. Throw the ball all the way down the field. The game of inches is done. 
this is not a time where they want to be more bold. They've been more bold. They've stepped on the gas in no time flat. Big changes made in society. We can still talk about nigga and hoe and be. But you best not call it transsexual, tranny. You can go to the restroom in certain public places now and see an ambiguous icon for asexuality. So they've stepped on the gas. So they want to step on the gas when it comes to social matters, making changes in society, making changes in how people think, how people interact one with another. Now that folks uh, have become, have organically become, it, it seems organic, folks have organically become less racialized. Well, I mean, you see more white kids and black kids interact than ever before. You can say that music has had a lot to do with that. Never said music was all bad, not one time. However, there was supposed to be a post-racial society. And we see the evidence of it in our daily interactions. There is a call by the brotherhood being put out to all of their headquarters of propaganda, music business, the news and information business. magazines and news programs and the call is to create this climate that resulted in what you saw happening in Charlottesville Virginia over the weekend now there were a lot of things that pointed to the false flag nature of everything that happened but there were also a lot of things that pointed to the fact that although there's a post-racial philosophy brewing in the air among a segment of young people, there are still those who are able to be manipulated because they feel disenfranchised. And if somebody plays to that, plays into that, pumps up their ego and pride, as it's been done in my community many times. You know, now we can see what we're seeing happening in the white community with a lot of young men, especially, mostly the men. They're starting to feel resentment. They're starting to feel minimized and marginalized. They're starting to feel, hey, what about me? Now, now this is not a new sentiment. This is a common sentiment among the ignorant. Black man, white man, Chinese man. Okay. And I say ignorant because you're ignoring certain things. Okay. In order to feed your ego and fuel your argument that hey, you know, what about me? You know, I'm being dismissed here. I'm not being served. I'm being disrespected. I'm being discriminated against. And the nationalists nowadays, the Nazi that you know, folks are calling cold, the stormers, that's stormtrooper, the Nazi stormtrooper. They were in heavy presence there. The Black Lives Matter controlled opposition group was in heavy presence there at Antifa. Another controlled opposition group, heavy presence there. I listened to a white nationalist cat, young guy, like he was in his 20s. And he tried to, to uh, speak as PC as possible. That, that's another thing too, a new phenomenon, this PC era, neo-Nazi. 
where you know they tried to you know make a case for pride like you see with folks that talk black pride they make a case for white pride because they see black pride and they see gay pride so they say well how come I can't deal with white pride and I'm not putting down nobody so he tried to I mean he did deliver his message in his video in that matter but he was there and I listened to him tell, tell everything went down few things were notable he said that you know once they had realized that they seemed like they was in a setup situation okay first of all he was of a military mindset they were all of a mil military mindset they went there with tiki torches and shields and helmets things to be used as weapons he said himself a lot of them had little short pocket knives he said he had a walking cane because they can't tell you you can't have a walking cane so they had the mindset to clash physically which is mistake number one if you're going to have this guise of benevolence and white pride or black pride or gay pride if you go there pretty pretty prepared to funk you're gonna lose any argument against anybody telling you that you're doing otherwise you know that you're not being benevolent but he said that you know they realized that, that they was blocked off on one side by Antifa and he said they turned around and they saw Black Lives Matter coming up and he said it was led by white folks uh, uh, he did say I think he said Maxine Waters I, I, I don't 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 quote me in that was you know leading quote unquote but the majority of people in the front lines all of what he saw was white folk I gathered from him and then when I look back at footage I saw the same now that's not to say white folks can't march for issues that they feel uh, are important issues concerning other nationalities of course that's always been done by the truly conscientious person you march for people's rights whenever you feel they're done wrong and unjustly. If you are you know, that type of soldier. That wasn't the point. The point is that, again, this, you know, everything about it appeared to be contrived. The premise taking down Robert E. Lee's statue is disingenuous, dishonest, fake, and a poor excuse for recompensation, for reparation, and appeasement. If you take that down, nothing changes in the neighborhood. Nothing changes in the minds of the police officers who are secretly members of white nationalist groups. You do nothing to change the minds of the Boule gatekeepers who are members of black nationalist groups. And usually homosexuals, bisexuals, and trisexuals behind closed doors. It doesn't matter when you do little token things like, like take down a statue. When we still are not given our constitutional rights concerning a plethora of real issues. So what difference would that have made? You could blow up all of these demonic and satanic monuments around New Babylon. And if it doesn't change the minds and the hearts of those who are the shot callers in New Babylon for real, for real, behind closed doors, they're gonna keep the same policies going. They're gonna keep the same people in place and in power. 
to be your overseers. And so you will have the same conditions. So that was disingenuous as a gesture in the first place. So that seemed like a setup. Then you got these three groups, not organic groups of people coming out from the community, but folks coming from all over. The dude that crashed the car into the crowd of people was from Ohio. You have folks from all over. Folks who were triggered and on the verge of being mind controlled slaves by default simply because they had their minds and hearts connected to this false narrative of the white man is being oppressed. And so they were able to be pulled in by demonic remote control. All of that energy that was there, everybody being so excited. All the yelling and howling. And the pockets of black protesters were minute in comparison. So don't let them call this a race riot. If it was organic, this was a riot between political groups. So then, if things were organic, the commander in chief and other people in the position of authority to reprimand these folks would call them by name, those three groups, and reprimand them accordingly. That would be just. But watch what unfolds. And yes, I saw the movie Detroit. And I said I was going to do a review on it, but in lieu of what has happened last weekend, I saw it the weekend before last. But in lieu of, of what has happened, I said, well, you know, because there really wasn't much meat there to the movie. Okay, so, so now let's go here. I wondered. This is going to connect because now you, you, you'll, you'll have an answer to something I did not have an answer to when I saw it and I wondered why it was the way it was. I watched it for the first 13 minutes wondering what's the plot of this movie. For the first 13 minutes approximately, I was thinking to myself, I have seen documentaries. So... How are they going to spin this? What is the plot? For 13 minutes, they amped you up. They put you in the midst of the beginning of the riot. You know, the, um, the start of the movie was in the blind pig. That incident there with officers is supposedly what started the riot. It has always been shrouded in mystery. Even as a young man living in Detroit who wanted to know the city's history, when I would ask the elders, my old dude who was shooting and looting during those riots, Nobody had a clear picture of how it started. The most common answer I would get, and think, I'm 44, I've asked this over the years, from the time I knew to ask about this type of stuff at 16 maybe. So if I was to glean all the different things I've been told by the elders who lived during that time, I was born in 73, the riot was 67. Most folks say something happened at an after hours back then called a blind pig. Blind pig meaning they would pay the police to watch, act like they didn't see nothing. So some jumped off at this blind pig. That's when the riot began. Then after that, was the issue at the Algiers Motel. And just in case you're gonna see the movie, I'm not gonna do the spoiler. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. So, I'm going to keep it in general, and that's how we're going to tie it back 
to what happened in Virginia. Until the movie plot started to come into play, which was still, you know, um, something that would make you hot under, under the collar. Just watching the plot play out after the plot part kicked in. Okay, you're going to be hot under the collar then. But the first 13 minutes was to make you hot under the collar, was to get you out there. I live on Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks used to be 12th Street. 12th Street is where they say it all kicked up. But to get you out there with the people on 12th Street, out there in the midst, and let you feel the, the emotion. It was so much hollering and screaming and bottles breaking and yelling. I thought the neighbors was going to call the police. Okay. I had it up kind of loud. But that went on for 13. It went on so long, I was kind of agitated at it because I felt the way I feel when somebody trying to make me do something. Would you feel like they were trying to make you do with you? I felt like they were trying to make me mad. And I wasn't trying to be mad. I was sitting there with the stern intention on watching this movie, believing it's going to be some jive, believing it's probably going to be some race baiting jive, believing it's probably going to be some amp me up, like Roots type of jive. Don't play no games. Don't, don't play with my mind. I know who to be mad at, when and why. I'm angry with the wicked every day. So as I watched, I felt this. I felt like they was playing with my mind. Okay, so y'all really get me into this. Y'all really trying to get me in the midst of this. Who spends that long on that? And, and you know, I said 13 minutes. It was when I picked up the DVD remote control. And I pushed the uh, display there. It showed me the time. And I probably did it maybe a minute after thinking about, man, that was a long time. Whew, finally, finally they got to the plot. So yeah, it was around 10, anywhere from 10 to 13 minutes. They spent just building up the emotions that one has in the midst of a riot. Now, because I ran across a good brother who had, had a copy of it, I've not seen it with my uncle yet, which was my intention. To go check it out with him. He was 18. My old dude is no longer with us. Can't consult him about it. But my uncle, he was there as well. And, and you know, my mom, although she don't like to talk about that type of stuff. Uh, I do want to see what the elder would say about the movie. But I'm going to tell you something. When I was out there in the streets and I bumped into a uh, enterprising young man who happened to have the copy. Uh, others were there too, patronizing him. And there was an elder sister there. And she had got a couple movies and I noticed she didn't get Detroit I, and I just was curious, you know. I mentioned something about it to her. I said, oh yeah, you know he got Detroit. And she said to me, oh, I don't want to see that. Uh, we lived through that already. Uh-uh, no Lord. Uh-uh. And she was walking away with her DVDs. You know, she kept talking about, no, no, ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm going to see that. We lived through that already. And I said something to the fact that, well, you know, we, you know, we, we need for y'all who lived through it to see it, to tell us if it's keeping it 100 or not. She was like, mm mm, nah, baby, I don't want to see that. And several elders mirror those same sentiments when you mention the movie around them. So, tying that back into, and, and you know, again, the plot of the movie, the, the bottom line plot, if you're from Detroit, it was, you know, basically the court case concerning the officers who perpetrated the crime at the Algiers Motel. And you know, how one of the original members of, of the dramatics happened to be one of the young men that was in there and all, all of that. So, you know, they tried to make a story of it. A scale of one to 10, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'm not gonna do that. You should see it. You should see it. See if maybe you get something different out of it. 
but I thought it was quite a coincidence. You see, around the city, you'll see billboard. Well, there were billboards up for this movie before it came out. There was a showing of this movie. Uh, it was the African American Museum, which is a big deal here. Okay, wherever they showed it, they showed it several places for the community to come out and see it first. And what I thought initially, before the Charlottesville thing happened the following weekend, was I thought, you know, they finally have come up with something to try to get us involved. We didn't, you know, when Michael Brown happened, from Trayvon to the Michael Brown to the shootings in South Carolina, nothing was going on that seemed to be enough to ignite Detroit's powder keg again. If you ask me, I think the people are very fatigued concerning that stuff. I don't think the powers that be understand that. They're not here, boots on the ground. But the people is not just real fatigued, but also real side-eyed concerning that stuff too, in truth. And I'm gonna tell you, because now we have a mayor who, you know, I don't agree with the fact that you can be the mayor of a community that you're not from, you can move in at the last minute and falsify records and illegally become that. But there are many here who are just so glad to see or to think that corruption is gone. And, you know, the city seems to be picking itself back up. It's a lot of building going on downtown. Okay. Increased police presence in the neighborhood. And depending on your neighborhood. I'm in the wasteland. I'll never see them. But the overall sentiment among the homeowner class in the city is that things are looking up. It's getting better. Let's not look back. We don't want to look back. We don't want to carry into a new phase of our existence. Old baggage. And that's the general sentiment. So it's going to be hard to light that fire. You know, we even had a shooting here by an ICE agent. I did a video on that. Because they brought Black Lives Matter out here and they thought it was going to get to popping. It didn't. The mindset is something different. Now, also we can relate all of these things that have occurred and all of these um, efforts to excite the masses. We can also say that it is because the witches and warlocks in charge are astral theists and they look at what's going on in the heavens and they try to on purpose, mirror negative things that they see happening in the heavens. They want to use negative energy, right? They play off the lust of the flesh, pride of life, lust of the eye. And this is also, I believe, um, related to the conversation, the days of Noah and I had. A conversation that we are going to update For tomorrow's broadcast. The next half the Hebrews is coming, but this had to be addressed in a timely fashion. That is uh, something that I think was on a lot of people's minds today. And we, you know, we want to frame these things the proper way. When we see these things happening, feel as I did when I was watching the Detroit movie about the 67 riots for the first 10 minutes. Just think about what are they trying to get you to think. Whenever you hear news and views. And let all things that come to you be tested by the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. And which will teach you things that you know not. Don't go off your emotions. Emotion, energy in motion. Emotions make good slaves but terrible masters 
And don't let someone play off of your emotions. Push your buttons. Don't be triggered like some sort of dormant mind control slave He's waiting for the opportunity to go psycho. This has been a public service announcement and part of your irregularly scheduled deprogramming. Shalom to let on.